Hey guys, what's going on? Today I am working on my 1975 Ford Bronco and I have been having some brake issues. One of my wheels has been locking up and my brakes have just been pretty spongy. So today what I'm going to be doing is taking off uh, the rear drums and replacing everything inside and making sure everything is good and also replacing the wheel cylinders. So first things first, jack your Bronco up and take the wheels off. Then you just want to take your drums off. Mine came off pretty easily, but I have worked on a couple where literally I have to take a sledgehammer to them and just destroy them because they're rusted to the hub or rusted to the, the axle in there. But if you are hitting them with a sledgehammer, definitely don't hit the stud um, because if you bend one of those or hit the threads on one of those, your wheels uh, your wheel nut won't go back on and you'll be up a creek without said paddle. I'm going to be replacing my wheel cylinder. So I took some PB Blaster and if you know me, I love me some PB Blaster. And sprayed the heck out of my hoses and my brake lines back there uh, because I wanted them good and loose. So once you get the drum off, you can actually measure to see what size it is if you actually don't have a clue and you've gotten this far and you said, hey, I've gotten this far, I should probably figure out what size my drums are. How you figure out the size of your drums is you measure the inside diameter of the drums. In this situation, mine are 11 inch. One thing that I've noticed though, if you have an 11 inch drum, then you should buy parts for an 11 inch drum. As I began to take things off uh, on my Bronco, I noticed that the previous owner had put some 10 inch parts on the 11 inch drum. So at this point, I just started taking everything out, pulled the springs out and pulled the shoes out and just pulled everything out along with it. Then I started to take the wheel cylinder out. And this is when I noticed that uh, not only was my wheel cylinder off center, but the previous owner had bought a 10 inch uh, wheel cylinder instead of the 11 inch. Now when you look at it, there's not a lot of difference between the two, but the 11 inch backing plate has a bigger hole for the wheel cylinder than the 10 inch backing plate. So that meant that 10 inch wheel cylinder could move around in there and it wasn't secure, which is why it moved to the side and pushed one of my brake shoes harder on the drum. So once you get everything off from inside, go ahead and spray some brake cleaner in there. Clean that up really nice. Then uh, it's time to put everything back together. So first, start with that wheel cylinder. And one little note to figure out which side goes on which. On the wheel cylinder, the hole for the brake line should point to the back of the vehicle. Now I had to take the bleeder screw off of the wheel cylinder uh, to get it to fit in. Tighten those bolts down and put the brake line on there and then put the bleeder screw back in. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is get out your new brake shoes and put the parking brake lever back on the brake shoe. And then put the parking brake line back in the parking brake lever. After that, I put in the hold down pins and the retainer spring on the secondary shoe and then did the same thing on the primary shoe. All right, so at this point, you're gonna put your springs back in. So first start with your secondary spring. Make sure when you put that on, you get the parking brake cable and that little holder clip thing on there with it. Now, if you're like me and you don't buy tools every time you do a project, uh, then you probably don't have one of those handy dandy tools that you can get springs on your brakes with. So what I used was a good old 5 16 wrench and I would put the spring on the wrench and move it up to drop the spring down onto that holder clip. On the first one, it worked awesome. One try, no worries. On the second one, my camera stopped recording because it took so long and so I didn't even film myself actually putting it on there so I don't get to show you the satisfaction that I had when I finally got that stupid thing on there. But this did work. It was just 
The second one was a little bit tricky, but nice little redneck trick. Then what you wanna do is attach the adjusting hook and the automatic adjuster spring and the parking brake cable. Make sure the cable stays in that channel or else it won't work. Then put in your adjusting screw. So that's pretty much it. Everything is pretty much back together. Put your drum back on, uh, but at this point, what you need to do is you need to bleed your system. The hardest part about that is finding someone who's patient enough to sit there and pump the brakes for you. This is Miss Carabelle. Carabelle, what should I work on today? The horn. The horn. She says I should work on the horn today. My horn doesn't work, apparently. What's the next step that we need to do after we're here? Uh, um, the tires. We need to fix the tires next. So you got everything put back together. You got your system bled. Uh, time to put the tires on and take it for a little test drive. Be on the lookout. I'm doing the front brake disc conversion next. So make sure you subscribe and please leave a comment below because I know I did something wrong and uh, I know you want to tell me about it.